Hey guys, this is Comic You Know, and today I'm doing a review for Arrow. So let's start talking about this episode. Uh, here we dig a little deeper into Prometheus and that he has the list for some reason, or at least uh, an idea of the list. So Oliver, Felicity, and Diggle kind of figure this out quickly. Uh, and their B team, the new recruits, find out about it and are mad that. Uh, that Oliver's been lying to them, and of course that they're just kind of sidelined and they really don't get enough information. So that's a big part of the episode, but especially um, Evelyn, who's very upset about it, um, Artemis, and you know, we explore their relationship a little bit more and why she's upset about these things. Uh, side story going on, we do have Felicity uh, wanting to tell her boyfriend that she works for the Arrow, does so, and that's kind of, I guess, happily ever after in that moment. And then we have Thea, who finds out that Quentin is still drinking, and then there's a big cliffhanger in this episode where uh, we find out that maybe Quentin is Prometheus, because there are there is evidence that connects to him being Prometheus, and maybe uh, he doesn't even know he's Prometheus because... Um, of his drinking. Uh, and maybe he's blacking out when he's Prometheus. We'll have to see. Uh, but I will say, I think that's a red herring. I think they just kind of left it off in that cliffhanger, but it'll be explained that Prometheus might, like, stop by or someone with Quentin. I'm sure he's connected in some way, but I don't think he's Prometheus himself. Uh, do think it's a red herring, and we'll, we'll actually see another story be told there. Uh, so I guess I'll start with the side stories first and then, then going going into the main story. Uh, side story, Felicity, uh, I guess this self-explanatory type story gave her a little bit of meat in this episode, but still I feel like she's very sidelined, which is weird because, again, she is a character that was so focused in, in the last couple of seasons, but now her story is just kind of, I don't, it feels irrelevant, this whole boyfriend story. I'm just not very interested. I kind of, I don't want her to obviously, you know, uh, have so much screen time like she did with the, the last seasons and have drama with Oliver. But I, I want her to have a little bit more of a role in these episodes. And, and that goes for the core, t uh, core team in general. That's been a big fault of the season. It's just balancing and juggling their main characters we actually care about. Like Diggle, like Felicity, like Thea, and like Quentin. Uh, I'll go, I guess I could go into the Thea and Quentin thing. As you guys know, Thea is my favorite character, and it kind of sucks how sidelined she's been. I mean, I'm glad she has a story, but it's very much of a reminder of season one slash season two, where they gave Thea a story, but that was mostly because they wanted her in the show, but they didn't really know what to do with her because she wasn't in the action or on the team. Um, and kind of goes back to that. I even had that flashback. Um, and again, that's not a bad thing, I guess, but I feel like Thea has grown to be more of a part of the team and uh, even if she's not on the team she could still like say oh well what's going on with Prometheus so you at least could tell me you know I feel like she'd be a little interested but uh they're not really playing with their story very much I mean I'm very happy they are doing the Quentin Thea dynamic but there's not a lot of screen time for them so when it does show up it's uh it's only like a minute or so of the episode so again very much flashback to season one and season two I guess all the other seasons where they don't know how to balance their supporting characters, especially season one and season two, because Thea really didn't have a lot of screen time back then, and it's kind of continuing there. I hope she has more of a story to tell, uh, because it was important that she left the team. There is there is a story to tell there. I feel like they just kind of dropped the ball, and she just kind of following Oliver around. I want more for her and Quentin, but at least with Quentin, we did get that cliffhanger, and maybe that will bring more story for Thea also. Uh, but we'll have to see as the episodes go, and I'm Pretty sure she's gonna be in the invasion crossover as Speedy, so they have about like an episode left to tell us how and if you know how she's gonna be Speedy again, unless they're gonna say in the crossover. I, I kind of hope they build up to it. Uh, so those are the side characters. Diggle really didn't have much in this episode. He was just kind of a comfort uh, person here. Uh, and then we have the recruits. We have the recruits in this episode and. The recruit that's focused a little bit more here is finally Artemis, uh, Evelyn, a character that I was really looking forward to because I'm a huge Young Justice fan. I really like the character Artemis on the show. She was like, like my favorite character on that show. And uh, they didn't really do much with Evelyn in this season. She just kind of says these one-liners and that's it. And even when she has her full story here, it just feels like she's a one-liner character. She's very two-dimensional. It's like, all right, my parents died. And that's kind of it. Like, I, I don't feel... Um, 
I don't feel to care for her character right yet, or right now. Uh, so, and that's with all the vigilante characters besides Curtis, because again, we had development with Curtis last season, so we, we feel a little bit more connected with him. But there's always, I feel, four storylines that, uh, that happen with Rory and, and Evelyn and Wild Dog. Uh, it, like, it's supposed to make us care about the character, but I feel like it's so cliche a lot of the times, or I just don't care about the character. So... Still very crowded, the show. There are too many characters they're juggling, and that's why we don't have time for uh, for Thea, for Quentin, for Tiggle, for Felicity, uh, because we have these recruits that I still don't believe we really need in every episode. Uh, and then we go into the main story with Prometheus, which I will actually say was pretty slow. Um, it was a very slow episode up until the end, where we actually do learn some things about the character. Uh, I think people who liked season one of Arrow is going to be really happy about uh, seeing the list and uh, those aspects of of the episode but for me I never really liked season one of Arrow at least the first half and I always felt like the list was such a plot device and it truly was it was a plot device like oh well there's a there is a villain we need to catch let's go get them uh, it was a very much a plot device and I was very happy when they threw away the list and now they have the list back in this episode I know it's just a call back but I didn't I didn't really like it uh, so yeah, there are, again, small positives of the episode. I, I like the Thea and Quentin um, part of the episode, even with the very limited uh, screen time for them. There's aspects of Prometheus I'm very interested in. I do think he's an interesting, um, mysterious villain. But the rest of it, I need a little bit more heart in the story. I want to care about these characters more. And the characters I care about, I want them to have good storylines. I feel like that's the big problem. They're focusing so much on characters I don't care about and, and not making me care about them. But then the characters we've grown to love for seasons are pushed to the side and don't really have a storyline of their own. So that's been the big problem for me for Arrow. But let me know in the comments below what you thought of this episode. Um... Where do you think the Prometheus story is going to go next episode? And what do you think is going to happen for the rest of the season? Do you think it's going to kind of continue this? Uh, what would you like to see for Arrow? So hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Comic Inno. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to like my Facebook page. Also description below, there are links for my comic book, Like Father, Like Daughter. And don't forget to like the Facebook page of Like Father, Like Daughter. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.